Hello everyone, Zen here, and we are back in Neverwinter Nights. Uh, this time we are gonna play Hordes of the Underdog, which is the second expansion to you know, Neverwinter Nights. And yes, so we are gonna choose this one, chapter one, and we are gonna select our pre-made character. I just exported just before fighting the uh, last boss of the previous expansion because this one is a little bit different we have lower armor class i guess this was just entering uh, the tower so we are choosing this one which is not that much different but whatever let's play you dream waterdeep one of the greatest cities in all of Faroon. It is home to a multitude of peaceful town folk from all races and all walks of life. Beneath Waterdeep, however, lies a different realm. This is the deep dungeon known as Undermountain. Built by the mad wizard Halaster. Here, Halaster tests adventurers who trespass therein with the deadliest of traps and the most dangerous of creatures. All but the luckiest meet their deaths in its dark halls. Ooh. Regardless of this presence beneath them, the people of Waterdeep feel safe enough. For while one may enter Undermountain, it is rare that anything actually comes out. Ouch! Until okay. now. For there is another realm that exists beneath even Undermountain. A place of shadows and evil known only as the Underdark. It is here that the sinister dark elves known as the Drow rule next to other subterranean horrors unknown to most on the surface world above. And it is the Drow who now lead an army of these creatures into the streets of Waterdeep besieging the city from below in a campaign of blood and terror. And in their darkest hour, the Lords of Waterdeep have issued a call for a hero. Someone who can face these dark elves and all their brethren in their own land. Someone who can defeat the hordes of the Underdark. Yep. We've got the title drop already. And we are dreaming right now. Oh! <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> I trust that your preparations are complete. Very nearly, Dread Mistress. It should only be a matter of. Do not test my patience, Ithin. Would you have me wait? I, the terror of all the Underdark, the Dark Queen of Shadow? Uh, of course not, my mistress. <laughs> then proceed. I wish to see this being who my agents say can stop my brave ride. I do not believe anyone could stop you now, Great Vance Shepherd. So I thought. But my agents have resources beyond the means of mortals. This one will be my undoing, so they say. If I do not act in time. So proceed, Wizard. I will wait no further. Soleno Sawatka, exactly. And they are gonna summon me. The strongest. Oh, so I guess the... Uh, priests. The, the ropes are broken. We have a spider. Yep, that's me. What is this? A surfacer and a male, no less. Have your spells become faulty, fool? No, mistress. This is indeed an image of the one who shall defeat you. Who shall defeat you? I defeat you. This image shows but a threat. It shall be dealt with like the others. You, male, remove this dead fool and summon my red sisters. Now. Yes, please. 
Hmm. Okay. And you, Surfacer, whoever you are and whatever threat you pose, you will not be able to hide. The drow shall strike swiftly and without mercy. Okay. Oh, we have Drow Thief, who is uninjured. You stand shivering in the chill night air, sweat cursing down your body. You are somehow woken suddenly from your slumber, leaping from your bed to face. What? The memory of your strange dream still rings clearly in your head, along with an inner alarm that tells you all is not right. Suddenly you notice a Drow Elf. She appears to be trying to break into the chest with your personal belongings. Kill her. Ah, shit. Okay. Oh, she can't do anything. We have very high attack bonuses. Rude awakenings. Okay. A pretty young woman rushes in a mixture, mixture of fear and concern on her face. You vaguely remember her as the daughter of the innkeeper. Excuse me, is, is everything... Oh my word! She finally spots the corpse of the draw thief and covers her mouth in horror. Mm -hmm. uh, is the inn under attack? Yeah, that's what a paladin would ask. No, I, I don't think so, my lord. I only entered your room because I heard the commotion from the hall. The draw woman, is she dead? Yes, I killed the thief. I don't think she was just a thief, my lord. She probably took your equipment so you could, would be defenseless. When the draw assassin showed up, that's been the pattern for the other attacks. Oh, there have been other attacks and you haven't told me. Not here in the inn, but some of what are these most prominent citizens have been killed in their homes while they sleep. Someone has been sending assassins to kill them all. But how could this thief I even have known that you were here. You only just arrived to the city. I'll have to tell father about this. We take pride in the safety of our guests. The thief must have used magic. That's the only way she could have gotten in here undetected. She must have used the same magic to send your equipment back to whatever, wherever she came from. Okay. Mm, well, then, any idea where I could get some replacement gear? Damsel frowns. Fathers gather weapons and armor and other equipment here at the end to help the, in the defense of Waterdeep. Anyone working to save the city is welcome to any of it. Everything is stored in the armory just across the hall. Just take whatever you need. Thank you. I'll go there right away. I know the equipment in the armory isn't suitable for a hero like you, Gregory Goodman. But it's the best we've got. Now please excuse me, I have to go speak to with my father. I'll tell him what happened here, but it would be best if you didn't mention it to the other guests. We don't want to start a panic in the inn. Father will take steps to see this doesn't happen again. Okay, uh... I could still use some help getting dressed. Uh... No, that will be all. Thank you very much. Goodbye, my lord. Once you have what you need from the armory, please go downstairs into, to the main room. My father is waiting there to speak to you. Okay, do you have anything? You have a unidentified dagger, which is better than what I have right now, and a laser iron stone, which is blue. Okay, great. So let's start. We don't care about the trap. We have a dagger that's a plus two, minus one. Or a... I mean, the other one's better. This is a... Average 3.5 damage, so let's say 4. That's 2 more. But this one, uh, this one has a bonus to it. Okay, we don't have any other chests here. So this is the armory. Yes. Let's go inside. And we've completed the quest. <laughs> yeah. Now. Ranged weapons rack. Yeah, we have Relic of the Ripper and a Rogue Stone. This is basically an escape mechanism. I don't think we will ever use it, so 
it's fine. We do, however, want to take everything that's a plus because we can sell it. We still have a lot of money. We have a plus one. Okay, let's take it. This miscellaneous equipment. Yes. Ah, gloves of Hintest. Okay. Whatever. Agility. Distance. Diesel. I mean, we won't be using it. But... Well, we don't need this. But, uh, well, freedom is useful. Heart skin. Protection and resistance. That's useful. The iron stone. What does a blue iron stone give? Protection from evil, okay. Actually, it's a really good good thing. Okay, I also want this, just in case we will be selling this one. This too. Oh, we have a book. Where is this here? Worn book. This large tome has a rather interesting title, Shadows of Anthrontite, written by one D. Scale Singer. Inside its pages is the full account of an adventure from earlier in your career. Your first adventure, in fact. The facts seem a bit exaggerated, but according to your memory, but that apparently didn't stop the book from becoming a great hit amongst the nobility in several major cities throughout Feyrum. For a time, you had the unique experience of becoming a household name. People who you didn't know would shout out to you happily, as you pass or treated you like a trusted friend, the fame eventually died down somewhat, which was a relief at the time, but you have held onto a copy of the book as a souvenir. As for the author, a cobbled bard by the name of Deakin, you haven't met him since those early days. Part of you has to wonder if you aren't owed some royalties. Okay. Yeah, nothing else really. These tools we can put here. Smoldered bag. Gold piece and more rogue stones. Yeah, basically, uh, those are tele teleporting. You, we get to go into the realm of the Reaper. Really now, you give me ranged weapons plus, but you don't give me a melee weapon plus one at least. Okay then. I mean, this is still better because we have specialization, so. At least give me a plate armor. No? Okay. Oh, it's a full plate plus two. Okay. That's better. And uh, that's all. Okay. Well, I would prefer a little bit more, but whatever. Come on, room. Is this nothing? And I don't really want to go. Tanarel, okay. Hello, Tanarel. Who are you and what are you doing, what are you doing here? I greet you. This ancient-looking man appears ready for battle, though his frail body can keep very keep itself upright beneath the weight of his armor. I mean, it's just a studded leather armor, so plus two, I think. It shouldn't be that heavy. Am I so old that I am of no use to anyone? I am one of the few who has entered Anter Mountain and returned to tell the tale. But now they tell me I am too old to help Water Reap against those foes. Uh, you're not too old. Get down here and there and fight. He snorts uh, the rising plot. What world are you living in, boy? Thornham has forbidden me to go down there. No, I am too old. I am just fooling myself. It hurts just to swing my sword for a short period of time. I will never be of use again. Uh, well, I tried. If you think you are too old, then maybe you are. I suppose so. Leave me to my age, thoughts, young hero. Yeah, we don't care about you. Uh, Sifus Ordine, okay. I greet you. Uh, although this man looks human, faint traces of elven features re reveal a mixed heritage. He appears to be meditating, but as you approach, his eyes open and he smiles in greeting. Good morning to you, my friend. I am glad to see you up and about this morning. I believe today you and the other heroes here shall finally 
hear what good Durnan has planned for you all. Hopefully he can shed some light on the recent assassination, assassinations and the denizens of the dark that are appearing to make war in this fair city. And you, who are you? My name is Sifos, a monk of the Guarded Mind Order. I have traveled here in hopes of finding new insights into the creatures of dark who now ravage this city. Very little has been written on the Underdark, and little of what has been written is verifiable. My order is interested in learning the truth of such things. And if you, what I have heard from others here is true, you are a famed adventurer. Perhaps I shall have to put some thought into documenting your presence in this war. Uh, would you like to work with me? I thank you for the offer. But I am afraid not. My main role here is observation, rather than interaction. I will learn what I can from studying the enemy, not fighting him. I do not expect you or any of the others to understand the beliefs of my order, but we do not involve ourselves in wars. We observe and record. That's all. Okay. Goodbye then. May your journey expand your mind and fill your life with wonders. Okay, no problem. We are gonna go downstairs. This is close and we can have a lock. Don't wanna pick lock because I'm not sure if immunity mind spells. But I think it's only from the the V. Oh shit. Lino is <laughs> invisible. Refugee is invisible. Okay, so there is some broken thingy here. Oi! Look who's here! Well that comes with pick with us, my friend. Yeah, hello invisible Lino. Blessed be. Blessed be. This elven woman has a pleasant aura about her as she nods her head to you respectfully. Yeah, there is a silver am amulet around her neck, marking her as a cleric of the elven goddess, Tehanin Moonbow. You are welcome amongst us, dear. I understand everyone here has been awaiting your arrival with great anticipation. Okay. The innkeeper has refused to acknowledge the rest of us until Gregory Goodman makes an appearance. I, for one, did not journey so far to render aid only to be ignored. I mean, you're a big son of a bitch, Dylan. You should be grateful to anyone here. Where's Jordan? Breezy. To be even allowed here. There is no need to be in time, Dylan. This man deserves our respect. He is an adventurer of war. And the fact that he is here is a boon to our cause. Huh? There ain't no cause that I know about that's gonna pay me a hundred thousand gold like this one will, eh? I agree with Tommy. Gold speaks louder than any cause I've ever heard of. That is an odd thing for a bard to say, Shawin. Have you no sense of the epic? I wonder if our friend here would agree with you. Then why do not uh, do we not ask him? What of it, Gregory? What has brought you to Waterdeep in its hour of need? Uh... <laughs> okay, so... I mean, we don't want to be an asshole, right? So yeah, Dornan called for heroes and I'm here to do the right thing. The half orc relaxes a bit and nods, please. I am pleased to hear that. The city of Neverwinter was once saved by one who chose to do, to do the right thing, as you say. The Elven Cleric regards you for another moment. I am told you are a man of faith, Gregory. It will be a pleasure to adventure together and get to know you better. I <laughs> think I want to adventure with you. It's says something a lot. <laughs> I don't think our traits have much in common. I'd like that. Yeah. Well, perhaps once you speak to Dornan, we shall have that chance. I look forward to it, dear. Uh, I should go. Yeah. I believe Master Dornan is waiting for you in the other room, dear. Good luck. Okay, uh, there's only one place to go, so... There's Parley. Do you have a name? I mean, Hello there. are you important? A pretty but quiet elf sips wine carefully from her glass before speaking. With all that is out of balance in this age, let my hospitality welcome and comfort you. Thank you very much. Times, do, times of stress and war do not exempt one from good manners, a lesson I am glad to see you understand. My name is Parley. I am a druid uh, out of Vasa, 
And you would be Gregory Goodman, correct? Yes. How did you know? I have heard a few tales about you since I came to this part of the world. I used to dream of having tales sold about me. It was another paladin such as yourself that convinced me to leave my homeland and enter this civilized world. But I am sure you have no interest in hearing about my struggles. You must have enough of your own. <laughs> That's I really don't want to know. No, sure, tell me. What troubles you? That is very kind. It is such a response that is the source of my problems though. I was content to live in my forest and tend to nature, solitary, yet not lonely, until I met Paragati. That she was a half-elf from the city who found me meditating by a small brook. I mentioned motion for him to join me and he sat at my side, simply staring at me. Okay. Uh, that would be strange. Once I had finished my meditations, we spoke at length. He told me how he had left the city to see the unfamiliar wonders of the forest, and he raved about the beauty of my world. After a time, I asked him about the life he had left behind. I thought he would disparage the city as an ugly, filthy place, but he did not. The city, he said, had its own unique beauty. After he left, his world stayed with me. I realized I needed to emer emerge from my retreat and sample the world and all it had to offer, so I came here, and you know what I found? That you hate it? As much as I love nature, I love the bustle of the city as well. Oh, okay, I, I did not guess right. Everyone leads a life that is as important to him or her as stirring nuts is to a squirrel, okay. And so I find myself in a quandary. How can I reconcile my life as a druid to a life in the city? I am not looking for an answer from you. The answer must come from within me, but thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome, I guess. Gregory, it has been a great pleasure talking to you. Please allow me to give a small gift. Oh, thank you very much. May your travels make you wiser, and your life be rich and full. For the stretch of a day, I gift you the strength of the bull. The balance favor you, Gregory. Okay, we get uh, improved strength from, from her. That's nice. We don't hear about them. And hey, care about them. Dreezy, hello. With long, dried splatters of blood across his face and an ale in hand, the dwarf looks contented and very drunk. I tell you true. I taste their blood and I'm going to taste more. Nothing could hold me back from this year under the mountain. As soon as I'm me done me drink, I'm going hunting. I've got a hankering for some monster brains to serve me on, on me yaks. How do you like a taste of the fire, lad? I'll join you that pissed old friend. He slaps your shoulder and laughs. I, I thought he might, and call me Drizzy, won't you? Now me and I... Uh, now me, I lead him my way through a dragon's intestines to escape a delicate predicament. And I don't mind telling you that a dragon's spleen is the juiciest meal a dwarf could enjoy. Particularly why the dragon is still alive, and a much more enjoyable experience than having to eat me away through my brother's partly digested corpse supremacy bat. Okay, how did you get inside the dragon? I should be thinking that'd be obvious. He ate me in a one big gulp. Me and my family was looking for a new home, and we heard about this huge dungeon that was underwater deep. Don't you know? I figured the mage that stuck. A place could use a good dwarf or two to keep these things going. So we came looking for Halaster. Oh, you wanted to live there? Sure, sounded like a right cozy little place to me, family. Uh, sadly, we never found the mage, and as we were set upon by one big black dragon. He ate me brother and me pa, though. He refused to eat me mother. I suppose she looked right bitter to him and all. He just spit his acid and melted her, her and his pot. Only he grabbed me and swallowed me whole. Unlike me poor family, I was wearing proper magical armor that protected me from the dragon's acid. And you really ate your way out of a live dragon. Are you calling me a liar? Every word of that tale be pure truth. And I don't expect to have much trouble with this here dungeon either. We'll call that mountain up and massacre our enemies, striking terror into their hearts with maniacal, maniacal laughter. Okay. I'll bet I can beat ye to the bottom, I do. 
I didn't even let you have a head start. That's mighty kind of you. Well done, can't do too many kindness. But you seem to have some qualities about yourself that would worth knowing. Did you get in some trouble down there? And I wonder why I might even consider helping you. But for now, I wish you the best of luck. I'm just going to have one more ale before I head down. Yep, he went down. Okay, uh... Oh, really now? That took quite a long time. Uh, quite a long time to just get through those two areas. Yeah, and this is the yawning portal in. Hello, Donan. Donan turns towards you as you enter the common room, a stern and solid man who is rumored to have once been a great warrior. The relief now on his face is clearly visible. Greetings. I am glad that you made it at last. I trust your accommodations were adequate? Uh... Yeah, aside from the thief in my room, very much so. Donan's features harden, a deep anger suddenly evident. Aye, right, Tamster told me what happened. I cannot apologize enough, Gregory. Once I would have been able to ensure safety of my guests, but no longer. The damnable draw come and go as they please, it seems. These are dark times for our city. The enemies of Waterdeep must have learned you had answered our call for heroes. Given your reputation, it's not surprising that they targeted you. Yeah, but why would they steal my equipment? Hold on a sec there. A drug thief came in and stole all your equipment. <laughs> if I'd known you were such an easy mark, I might have nicked your stuff myself. <laughs> then on silence is Tommy Slaughter with a cold glare. That's no joking martyrs. Martyr, the Dwarf don't play games. I'm guessing that that was only the first step in their mission. The Dwarf likely figured you'd be more vulnerable without your equipment. A Dwarf assassin would probably have shown up a few seconds later to finish you off in your sleep. Watch with me, you woke up and thwarted their plan. Others in Waterdeep haven't been so lucky. There are several reports of prominent citizens slain in their beds. Waterdeep is under attack, its people live in fear. That's why I made the call you all responded to. We are going to do something about it. Uh, why don't the Lords of Waterdeep deal with this? The Lords of Waterdeep have their hands full protecting the city. I have experience with Undermountain, so I have been placed in charge of organ organizing this venture. I'm is willing to help, just so long as that 100 gold, a thousand gold piece reward stays on the table. Not all of us are here because of the gold, Dernan. Some of us truly want to help. Please tell us what must be done. The city is under siege. Raiding parties of drow and other creatures rarely seen on the surface are attacking the city. We've determined that these attacks are coming through Undermountain. But Undermountain has existed for centuries. Why hasn't there been any trouble before? That's what we need to find out. The Labyrinth of Undermountain was created long ago by Halaster, a mage whose power may have rivaled even Elminster himself. Mm -hmm. Halaster ruled Undermountain like a brutal tyrant. It was his magic that kept the creatures within from pouring out to overrun Waterdeep. Now Halaster has suddenly decided to unleash his creatures on this city, and we need to find out why. I want to know what that mad mage is up to. Maybe something happened to him? It's possible something happened to take Halaster out of the picture, I guess. But I find that hard to believe. He's a wizard of incalculable power. You don't just get rid of someone that powerful. It's odd that Halaster has aligned himself with the Dark Elves. He's never been too fond of them. The Raw are attacking through Undermountain, and that means Halaster must be involved. Would he still even be alive? Undermountain was built hundreds of years ago, but Halaster is an Archmage. Time doesn't mean the same to him as it does to us. I'm certain he's still alive, and that he's involved in these attacks. It's pretty clear that the answers we seek can't be found here on the surface. The only hope we have of stopping Halaster is to send someone down into Undermountain after him. Uh, how are we supposed to do that? Yeah. As many of you know, this inn is built around one of the entrances to the Under Mountain. A magical well that descends thousands of feet down into the very depths of that ever-changing labyrinth. Now I don't intend to send anyone into the Under Mountain unprepared. 
That would be suicide. I'll offer you what advice and equipment I can. In fact, I think it might be a good idea if... Wait, what's that noise, father? Uh, it's coming from the well room. Durden listens intently for a moment before his eyes go wide with the realization of what is about to happen. And yeah, we are under attack. One fireball. Oh, we'll draw. It's okay. Yeah. Oh shit, I'm 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 killed. I've I've been killed. Oh, but I'm I'm immortal right now. Okay, that's that's strange. Huh? Oh, thank you for healing me, you know. That's that's very nice of you. I'm so badly wounded. The king is wounded. We have a few dead people. Follow me, we must secure the well. Well I mean That's okay. Because uh, <laughs> this episode is much longer than it should have been. Oh yeah, they've been resurrected. Oh she's she's already there. Not sure why she, what she's doing here. Mray, Dickin. We are gonna talk with Dickin. Just wait for White Testa to res resurrect the other people. It was horrible. Thank you for your assistance. Yeah, and here's this one. So yeah, this is the beginning of the Hordes of the Underdark. Quite uneventful, actually. So, uh, yeah, we are gonna do something about that in a moment, in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, thanks for uh, watching, and remember if you liked it, push the like button. If you disliked it, dislike button. Anything else, you have any uh, suggestions, there's comments for that, and I'm gonna see you in the next episode.